Hello, welcome back. It's Thursday the 8th of August. Uh, this is the good, the bad and stupid news. I'm uh, going to get straight on with it. Um, lots to uh, to go through today. So uh, we're going to start off with the uh, alien life that's been found on the moon. Uh, you might have read about this today. There, there is alien life or there is life on the moon. Um, it's not actually life life's been found, should I say, but it's not actually life that was there of its own accord. It's actually life that we sent there, apparently, because it was on a a spacecraft that crashed, which had um, creatures, that's what they call them, creatures. I'm going to say insects, but they're actually pig-like creatures called tardigrades, um, and they're known as moss piglets, and they were sent up there um with human dna and lots of other things which apparently we send into space um to in case there is an armageddon so not too sure what they expect this stuff to do once there's been an again what do we want to like kind of colonize other planets with these creatures because what they're saying is that these creatures would actually live uh they're probably still alive it crashed a while ago uh, crashed in April and they reckon that they're still alive and could probably survive up there for 30 years and if they can survive for 30 years they could probably adapt and thrive and colonize the place and turn into like some kind of uh, you know grow into some kind of um, evolve into some kind of living functioning kind of race or population this is my mind going going on one here but uh but you know if you're going to send things up into space for that eventuality you don't want to send things that look like this you don't want to be meeting these in the future when they've evolved into something a little bit but a bit more cleverer than they are at the moment see that look at that it's, that's that's a horrible looking thing isn't it it's a i don't know i, I defy anybody to say that's cute but that is what they call it. That's called a tardigrade. But it looks like it's got an an ass for a face, for starters. You know, you're unlucky to ever be born as one of them. I mean, I hope uh, what's it called reincarnation isn't real because um, you know if you tot up the bad things you've done in your life, you might end up coming back as an animal with an ass for a face. Uh, anyway, but yeah, so these things are on the moon and uh, we sent them up there and they've been likened to uh, the Clangers. So uh, they're going to be this new race of, uh, uh, of aliens that we've created. And uh, what's he saying there? They, they can survive in the harshest of conditions and they are found all over, uh, all over the, the world. Anyway, sort of in mountain tops, mud, volcanoes, rainforests, so they're everywhere anyway. So maybe they're actually taking over as we speak. But uh, I've never seen one. I don't think I really want to, looking at that. So, uh, uh, so yeah, so watch this space, literally. Pigs in space. Um, uh, I'm gonna, I've lost my train of thought with that one now, but uh, we're going to move on to, what's this one? The Royal Mint failed to produce... Uh, a single 1p or 2p coin last year, sparking fresh fears that ministers plan to axe them. Fears for who? Uh, then Chancellor Philip Hammond pledged to keep our beloved coppers last year after a campaign by the Sun. So the Sun is the, the Sun newspaper are responsible for uh, or taking credit for the fact that ones and 2p's are still in circulation. Well. Uh, if you want my opinion, son, you've done nothing for nobody. But also, even if you were, who wants one or two peas? I don't. You know, all you do is just, you know, they pull your trousers down because you got too many in your pocket, or you fucking chuck them in a in a thing and save them. Then have to count them like at the end of the year, which is a ball ache on its own anyway. So you know, what's one and p one and two p going to make much difference to anything? It's all kind of, uh, you know, because back to the days when things were actually cheap, you know, when 1p might have actually made a difference to something, you know. 
it's, you know, they're irrelevant, aren't they? I mean, most things people pay by cash anyway. I mean, uh, sorry, by card or whatever anyway. So you don't need one and two Ps. Uh, but no, one P wouldn't make a difference to fucking to anything. So uh, I say get rid of them. Give us a three P coin instead. Let's mix it up a little bit. But um, no, I mean, some people they're getting getting out, you know, save the penny, writing petitions and everything. So uh, you know, I've got better things to do with my fucking time. Like count me penny jar the other day. What I had to do to pay a bloody bill only because I was waiting for it. I'm not asking. I was only because I was waiting for some money to come in, but. I thought, well, fuck you, rather than go to the bank, I'll count my penny jar out and see what's in there. So, uh, yeah, give me a reason to do something. Um, what's this one? Sean Ryder is uh, joining the cast of Benidorm. The film. Uh, there's going to be a film of the TV programme, Benidorm, and Sean Ryder is uh, being tipped to star in the film. Um, I've never really watched Benidorm, but... I think it's just working class people living in Spain, isn't it? I think it'd be quite funny. I might watch it one day, but uh, uh, I've haven't, I haven't never caught it. But um, I imagine it's quite funny. I think the idea is quite funny. I've actually been to Benidorm, so I can see how it would be funny. Benidorm's one of them places where people who don't like any kind of change or that when they go on holiday, they want to take their life with them and just have it exactly as they would back here, but maybe enhanced by being able to watch EastEnders all day in the bar with an English breakfast or the Only Fools and Horses bar or things like that, you know. So they're just having what they would do on a normally normal daily basis over there. They don't want anything to do with anything Spanish. You know, fucking Spanish food, no. It's English breakfast, English food, English roast dinners, English TV, English football. It's almost like fucking, you know, fucking embarrassment, if anything. Um, but Sean Ryder's is going to be in the film anyway. I mean, I don't know. He's not an actor, is he? But I think he'd be funny in fucking anything, wouldn't he? So, uh, you know, he's going for a laugh, so I'm sure it'd be good. Uh, but that's a film that's going to be, uh, well, it's not even been made yet, so you'll have to wait for that one. Um, what's this one? Paul Hollywood again. We've got to talk about the Paul Hollywood situation. Um, only because, you know, it's quite funny because now he's, uh, it's only been two days, isn't it? But now he's trying to cancel her. She, he, he paid for a charity skydive, the Bake Off Judge, and uh, he's now been ringing up the company trying to cancel it and get his 560 quid back because he's saying he doesn't want we're not together no more I'm, I'm not paying for her to do a charity jump said the millionaire paul hollywood and uh, they've told him to to do one because uh it's too late and plus they want the 560 for the charity what's the charity lord whiskey lord whiskey sanctuary an animal charity so uh, uh skydive's going ahead Without further ado, and, um, and that'll be going into the book. What's it going to say? Say anything about that? No. But there's more to come on that story, I'm sure. But unfortunately, that's the problem, isn't it? Because you literally, you, you dirt, you, your laundry is in the uh, your laundry is in the public domain. So, unfortunately, you got idiots like me commenting on on your relationship, where uh, you know. Only because I find it funny. I couldn't give a shit otherwise. But, um, you know, who wants that? You like anything, everything that you do. He's like, I mean, anything he does, he's just rang this charity to cancel this skydive or whatever. Everybody knows about it. You can't do anything. You're better off not, not doing that and just like letting the 560 quid slide, you know, because now everyone just thinks you're a bloody sour grapes and all them women yesterday that was giving it the, uh, the girl power. Leave the old fart, you know. Look at what you're doing with him. It just feeds that, doesn't it? So you end up building a fucking rod for your own back. You're better off just to stay silent and you know disappear for a bit or get you keep keep out of the news. You know what I mean? But the more you the more you do, 
you're stoking the fire and obviously it's all going to be in the book wait for the book uh, on an equal fame uh, level um, Ginsters are celebrating 50 years of business Ginsters who, who sell oh, well, I found this interesting because they, they, they sell 800,000 treats a week Ginsters um, I think they're fucking horrible I, I, don't, I don't eat them but um, Ginsters but they're all you know service station food aren't they I have eaten quite a lot but I don't know I'm more selective about what I eat but I can you know it's one of them fucking it's about overpriced is what they are about a fiver in they from fucking service stations way more than what the you're paying way more from what you should get uh, anyway it's got it's got a load of facts about uh, because it's half a century they're giving you a load of ginsters facts which uh, you know about as interesting as um, as talking about ginsters pasties one of the facts is a Cornish rapper called Stephen Hall wrote a tract called Ginsters Paradise, which is a play on Coolio's big hit, Gangsters Paradise. I haven't heard that one. Thank very, thanks very, uh, thank the Lord, should I say? Um, you know, I don't think that one's made it into the hip hop hall of fame. So uh, anyway, it's Ginsters' birthday, so if you want to celebrate with them, go out and get yourself a pasty. Um, you get. If you're off on your holidays, you're probably not off on your holidays because there's been a f flight fiasco at the airport. British Airways have, an, have had an IT flop. Uh, their IT system has gone down, had a meltdown, and around 20,000 passengers were hit by cancellations after it halted at least 117 flights due to land or take off from Heathrow. Just chaos, isn't it? The airports, 127 planes cancelled, 20,000 people stranded, holes and weddings, holes and weddings ruined. Yeah, you know, if you're on a mission to get somewhere and you're on a deadline, your balls, don't you? You can't do it. So, uh, yeah, it's a wound. Out. Always happens, though, doesn't it? Always happens, and it always happens in the peak times. Always happens where everybody's trying to get away, but it all fucking goes tits up. So, um, Unfortunately, it's all part of the part of the thing, isn't it? You got to kind of uh, go out of season, but it's a bit more, a bit more chilled. But if they're putting double flights on and whatever else, and trying to bank, you know, maximise. You, if you're on a copy, I always remember the time when uh, I went to Ibiza for. Uh, I went. I, I caught a one-way flight, fifty quid. I thought oh, that was cheap. I don't know how long I'm going to stay there for, so. I'll, buy my return flight when I'm ready to come back well I could I it was bank over the bank holiday weekend could I get a return flight I couldn't get one for starters and I couldn't get one anywhere near 50 quid I ended up having to pay 350 pound and I couldn't get it uh, I wanted to fly to Gatwick I couldn't get it to fly to Gatwick first of all I had to fly to, to uh, Milan this is for my beef I had to fly to Milan and then do a stopover in Milan for six hours at the airport. This is for 350 quid, a six hour stopover at the airport. And it was like, the flight was at midnight, so the stopover was all the way over the night. I just sat in, in an empty airport. The shops were all shut at the Madrid airport. It was horrible. And then, um, and then eventually I got back to uh, Heathrow or somewhere further afield than Gatwick anyway can't remember where it was just grim that was it was the worst flight and for the price 350 quid i thought i was going to get a 50 quid flight back so they sting you on the return so uh don't make that mistake again that was going at the on the on the busy time august so uh yeah and i went last minute because i was going to a wedding and thought well i'll go you know i want to go so uh, I, I booked it all and jesus that was a expensive lesson Right, okay, so we're going to crack on. Um, a fired key cutter from uh, Timpson's Key Cutting Facilities wore his old uniform to raid his former job and rob the safe. So that's a key cutter scorned, isn't it? Um, he robbed 
755 quid and then it went off and 500 quid's worth of stock what's he nicking by flat keys that's all they've got isn't it or uh, shoe shoe horns or shoe polish it's not exactly the sale of the century he's got he ain't gonna make those fucking big quids out of that is he he's got caught anyway so you know kind of a shit uh you know, shit, it's a shit thing to do for yourself, isn't it? Um, he's just got, he's got home. He's gone right, rubbed the place. I've got a load of flat keys and shoe polish. What the fuck am I going to do with that? Um, so he robbed the money, and now he's got twelve months in jail. So, whoopsie. That's uh, a bit worse than uh, my three hundred and fifty quid. I, I don't think he's had to pay money back as well. Uh, what's this one? There's a picture there of. Word of army dudes, Kazakh servicemen performed during an open ceremony of the International Army Games in Kazakhstan. Uh, the ceremony at the 40th military base uh, in the Otar in Zambul region, include, including a Master of Artillery fire contest and a concert in front of delegates from each of the participating countries. I've never even heard of that. Is there anybody countries any? same countries in the uh, army games you know or was it just crazy regions or whatever I'd, i don't know i don't know much about kazakhstan but it's over those areas where they're a little bit trigger happy and stuff isn't it or anybody of the western world over there in the this army games seems a little bit uh yeah boys and toys weapons they like to show off don't they but they're these countries like to show up with their military might and stuff. I mean, the opposite to that is a festival I saw once when I was in Australia. It was a, a festival in Nimbin where it was like, it was because Nimbin, they, they grow weed there. It's like a, a big weed growing area. I don't know if it's legal. I don't think it is, but they just do a a weed festival. And they travel through like, like the Mardi Gras type situation, but they're going through on floats made to look like big spliffs and they're doing spliff rolling competitions and spliff throwing competitions and cookie eating competitions you know that's more interesting or more fun than going to the army games send you know send your team over from your country or whatever to enter the uh, the weed festival of Nimbin who could you send over from England who's a stoner Who's the best stoner in England? I think from America would be somebody like Snoop Dogg, wouldn't it? But I'm not too sure who's the big weed. There must be somebody. But you send him over anyway. He'd be like our, our athlete, our number one, gold. Come back with all the golds. Um, all right, what we got here? Oh, this one's good. A basketball player. A, bas a basketball player. Had his uh, has been called has has been suspended after he attempted to cheat a urine drug uh, a urine drug test um, when he backfired. Sorry, somebody's just popped up on my screen. It's gone now. American basketball player was suspended after he attempted to cheat at a urine drug test after a urine drug test backfired because the urine drug test suggested that he was pregnant. He couldn't even make that up, could you? Because he's basically used a woman's or, you know, a friend's urine to sort of put his drug test in. And she's probably didn't even know either that she's pregnant. So he's come up on his drug test as, as being pregnant. So um, obviously that ain't happening. Oh, that's a bit weird. So uh, they've... It's pretty obvious that you've you've you've, you've used somebody else and uh, he's got... He's got, um, he's got banned, so... Uh, there you go. If you're going to do it, be a bit smarter than using, like, you know, the opposite sex. You, you wouldn't think that they'd even be checking, you know, that they, they, they could even get that close, I suppose. So, you know, you can't really blame him, but maybe it was a last minute thing. He was the first person he had to sort of uh, give, him a, give him a sample. Anyways, come on, stuck with that. Uh, everyone's been laying into this, this police woman uh, because she's got. A police woman came on the on the on the TV to uh, she's leading the operation to save the Whaley Bridge Dam, uh, which is 
you know, possibly going to collapse, or which is going to collapse. Um, she was giving a speech on the TV, and that's a picture of her. And everyone's laying into her hairstyle. Um, she probably just had her hair. She must have known she was going to go on the TV. She probably thought, I'm going to get my fucking hair done if I'm going to be on the TV. So everyone's calling her Jedward and... Uh, Jedward and... What's the other one? Sonic the Hedgehog. So she's getting mucked beyond... Uh, you know, for, She's on there giving a you know, speech about saving lives and saving the dam and... You know protecting the area and whatever else and everyone's just ripping her about her hairstyle so uh that's a shame it's not the kind of hairstyle you'd associate with the police policeman in it they change the laws these days you used to have to be six foot shaved head you know no messing but now you can be a bit they're a bit more flexible which is which is good because uh imagine you could only be six foot you'd have to ask every six foot person do you want to be a policeman they'd be like nah you know shit you know we're running out of people to ask so that to just open it up to everybody then. Once upon a time, yeah, yeah. Then was the rules. Uh, what's it called? Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen Klopp learned to speak English by watching um, Friends and copying Joey Tribbiani. So, uh, has anybody heard Jurgen Klopp say, How are you doing? Well, that's apparently how easy it was. Germans used to be able to copy or listen to the friends and pick up the English accents or English language. So, Joey Tribbiani is is the voice that you probably hear lots if you over in Germany. Then either that or what's his name, David Hasselhoff. They love David Hasselhoff over there, don't they? So maybe they were using him as an English teacher as well because uh, he's didn't he have a number one hit? over there and sang a concert from the Berlin Wall so Joey and David Hasselhoff are the two top guys over there don't know where I'm going with that one um, an escaped canary found flying in a Plymouth park has been nicknamed Boris because he has fluffy golden hair like the Prime Minister the canary was spotted by a member of the public and brought to the RSPCA Little Valley. Uh, and afterwards they were named in uh, Boris. Well, I've seen them canaries as well, and they, they do, don't they? Have you seen those canaries with like, they got like, oh, got a little wig on? They're funny looking things. Um, Cause you've got normal canaries, and then you've just got these random odd ones that have just like got this kind of bouffant hairstyle. And uh, they do very much look like Boris Johnson, so. Let's see more of those pictures in the paper and I can pull them up on yeah. that. There was a problem with the, uh, the the camera. Something came up on the screen I couldn't see what I was doing. So we we're just going to imagine that didn't happen. Um, uh, so we're going to finish up on these last ones. Horse race legend John McCruick. McCruick, not an easy name to say, has uh, had his funeral. He's, uh, he died in July and uh, he's a, he had a small ceremony with his four or five people and his wife the booby who he used to call her um it, i liked uh, john mccreek he was a, a character wasn't he? i didn't like horse racing but i always could watch it just because he was on i never knew what the fuck he was talking about but it was quite interesting to watch when he so uh he, he seemed to know i think he just maybe he didn't even know what he was saying himself but he kind of uh just winged it didn't he just smoked his cigars and waved jangled his jewelry around and then uh uh, said a few numbers and you know whether he was like actually giving you any tips or not I don't know but uh, yeah he was, a, he was a character and uh, sorry to see him go um, what's this one a cricket legend Sir Ian Beefy Botham's son has been declared bankrupt over an unpaid £50,000 bill for pheasants uh, he was supplied the birds by game breeders last summer in his two shooting estates in Scotland and Lincolnshire. So uh, his millionaire dad said to him, sorry son, you can fucking deal with that one yourself. I ain't getting involved. You bought the pheasants, you pay for the pheasants. Um, all right, last couple here. Uh, there's a shop in uh, Greedy Seagulls in Cardiff uh, are stealing so much grub that the cafe owner has put up signs saying it doesn't offer refunds if they are snatched away and the sign basically says 
Oh, it's got a sign there and it says you can't read it. Once the food is given to you, if a seagull takes it from you, no refunds will be made. The seagulls won't the seagulls don't work for us. Sorry for the inconvenience. So he's obviously having people go. Uh, my sandwich has been nicked. Can you make me a new one and stuff? So he's obviously going right. I ain't having none of that. So it's your once the sandwich has been given to you, then it's your problem. Uh, Magnum buses have slammed for compare. Uh, Magnum buses, the ice cream, have been slammed for comparing the guilty pleasure of the ice cream to being imprisoned for being gay. Their new advert features a man who cannot hug his partner for fear of being jailed. He tells the audience, a hug for my boyfriend, that's my guilty pleasure. Because in my country, just a simple hug with a man I love could send me to prison for more than 10 years. How is that advert going to sell ice creams? It's like... Um, that's like how random is like who's gone who's on the advertising board who's going hmm you know what I think would be a good idea let's talk about you know the dangers of hugging uh, uh, another man in certain countries the people who've been listening uh, who've listened to it on the musical streaming site Spotify who listens to Magnum on Spotify Magnum ice creams um, and one outraged listener wrote, what the fuck is Magnum running an advert about being queer in a homophobic country being fucking comparable to a chocolate ice cream? And rightly so. Um, that's exactly hit the nail on the head there. What the fuck are Magnum running an advert about being... Why the fuck are they ad running an advert about being queer in a homophobic country being fucking comparable to a chocolate ice cream? So, yeah... I think anybody and his dog would say the same thing. So uh, I think they've. There's a bit of a faux pas there. Um, will I go out and buy any magnums tomorrow on the back of that? No. So uh, it's not a winner. Come out with something a bit more light hearted. Right, last one. Uh, it's been a long one today. Um, Tottenham fans are the most likely to make their partner scream gold in bed. After years of coming close, Tottenham can finally claim they are top of the Premier League, according to the latest research. Nearly three quarters of Spur fans estimate their partner reaches orgasm every time they have sex. Now, is that fucking. Is that just Cockney bravado, or is that like true? You know, I mean, who, what story? You're going to go and ask a load of, like, you know macho or alpha males whether they at a football match whether their partners reach a climax or have an orgasm what do you think they're going to say what the, what the, ask their partners that's what you should ask ask their partners and see what they say but um anyway apparently tottenham are at the top top of the list well i'm sorry but i've just read the whole of this and i don't see birmingham city on the list at all and uh, I think if anybody who follows Birmingham, I'm a Birmingham City fan and I can honestly tell you that Birmingham City fans would suggest that they are top of the shagging um, uh, polls so you know I think each to their own I think uh, as, as from where I'm sitting Birmingham City are the top shaggers are top of the pops when it comes to shagging and Tottenham are nowhere near and Aston Villa are at the bottom. I'm only joking. I can't really uh, diss my fellow Brummies when it comes down to uh, Birmingham versus London, Manchester, Brighton are up there as well, Newcastle. Please, Birmingham City. Have they even asked anybody in Birmingham? Let's ask the ladies. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. So thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully going to be another one tomorrow. So um, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye.